Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Comedy, back with another Dokkan Battle video. And today, I want to tell you guys about all of the free-to-play units on JP that are not yet available on Global, but that we should eventually get at some point in the future. And before we get started, just one thing I want to say is that um, I tried my very best to compile as comprehensive of a list as possible. I tried to get all the units that were missing from the JP side, but it's always possible that I missed a unit here or there. So if you guys noticed that I forgot someone, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll make sure to let everybody else know in the pinned post as well. Oh, and one other thing is that I decided to not include any of the awakenings for certain free to play cards like the physical Gohan from the Bojack event or the Goten and Trunks from the revamped Broly event, mainly because they're not technically new units and also there are already so many units I'm talking about in this video, I think including those awakenings would just make this video way too long, so hope you guys are cool with that, and if all that sounds good to you guys, then let's jump right in. And what we're starting with in this video is actually the units from an event that I completely forgot about in my video talking about upcoming global story events, and that would be the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission Story Event. And I think the reason that I forgot about this one is because I just, <laughs> I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around the fact that Global is finally getting Dragon Ball Heroes units. So I think that's why my brain just didn't go there in that video. So I apologize to everybody that watched that video. I did forget about one story event. And if we do end up getting the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission banner, just like um, Dokener said we would, then we should, we definitely should. And it's not guaranteed, but we should be getting the associated story event as well, and that would be the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission story that you see right here. And the two new free-to-play units that come with it are this STR Beat here, and also this AGL Oms. And I'm not 100% sure if that's how you pronounce his name. I think it's I think it's Oms. It could also be Ams, I guess, something like that. But Oms makes the most sense. So I'll, I'll go with Oms in this video. So let's pop over to the beat first. And as you might have noticed, it says Great Saiyan Man 4 as opposed to Beat. And there's definitely a good reason for that. But I don't want to get into it in this video, mainly because I don't want to spoil it for anybody that plans to play this game in the future and wants to find out for themselves. All right, so we have the Earth Saving Hero, Great Saiyan Man 4, who does Dokkan Awaken from this base form Beat. And his leader skill is Super Class K plus 2, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 40%, which honestly kind of sucks. But you know what? That's okay because we're not really using him for his leader skill. His super attack is Kamehameha, raises attack and defense, and causes supreme damage. And his passive is a new hero clad in red, attack and defense plus 50%, Super Class allies K plus 2, and defense plus 30%, and youth category allies attack plus 30%. So, Overall, he's actually a very solid free-to-play super type support unit, giving all super types key plus 2 and defense plus 30%. But of course, he's best on a youth category team where he gives pretty much all allies key plus 2 and attack and defense plus 30%. In fact, I think the only extreme type units on that category are those kid Vegetas. So unless you're running a kid Vegeta on your team, then your entire team should benefit from that support passive. And on top of that, his own personal buff is actually better than it might initially seem. So instead of attack and defense plus 50%, it makes more sense to read it as key plus two and attack and defense plus 80% since he's both in the youth category and also a super type unit. And key plus two and attack and defense plus 80% is very respectable for a free to play unit, of course, it's far from the best we've seen from a free-to-play unit, but I think he is good and he's a great filler for the youth category, for a super type team, for a time travelers team, or any other team that you can fit him on. So uh, there you go, that's the great Saiyan Man 4 right there. His links are Kamehameha, Courage, Hero, uh, Hero of Justice, Inviter, Patrol, and Shattering the Limit, and, and his categories of course are time travelers, and youth. Alright, so now let's move on to the AGL Oms. So this is Oms third form, and this is the Dokkan version of the second form Oms right there. And once again, I'm not really sure if I'm saying his name right. His leader skill is Extreme Class, key plus 2, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 40%. His super attack is Super Black Kamehameha, causes supreme damage to enemy, and lowers attack and defense. His passive is Blacks and Hits Battle Data. 
Attack and defense plus 40%, sorry, 50%. Uh, extreme class allies keep plus 2 and defense plus 30%. And artificial life forms category allies attack plus 30%. So you might have noticed at this point that he's basically the mirror image of the Great Saiyan 4, except for extreme types. So for the extreme side, and everything that I said about the Great Saiyan 4 does apply to the Oms as well. Um, he's a great support unit for extreme in general, but especially artificial life forms. And his links are loyalty, metamorphosis, toughest nails, big bad bosses, Kamehameha, fear and faith, and shattering the limit. And his categories are time travelers, transformation boost, and artificial life forms. So there you go, guys. That's the Oms and the Beat or Great Saiyan 4 for you. And they're both available through the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission Story Event, which we should be getting if we are in fact getting the Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission Banner, which is happening according to Dokener. Of course, nothing is confirmed, but there's a good chance, and I'm very excited to be able to get my hands on these two free-to-play units. Now, while we're on the topic of uh, Dragon Ball Heroes and just like Dokkan collabs in general, there are two other units I want to talk about um, that are very old, but I feel like we should still get them on the global side because I just want them in my collection, to be honest. So the first one is the Fusion Power Return Teen Gotenks, and he was given out as part of a login gift for some kind of Dragon Ball Heroes um, celebration in the past. I wasn't around for that, so I don't really know exactly what the details are, but now that we are getting Heroes units on Global, I think this guy should make an appearance on Global as well. Maybe as a login bonus too, once we get the Heroes banner, or maybe as part of something else, but um, I just want him. I mean, he kind of sucks, to be honest. Like His leader skill is key plus two when HP is 80% or below. Um, no, take that back. He really sucks. He's really bad. Uh, super attack, burning Kamehameha causes extreme damage. Uh, passive is justice approaches, key plus 2 and attack plus 5000 when HP is 50% or above. Links are same warrior race, Saiyan lineage, old judgment, Kamehameha, fuse fighter, and his categories are fusion and hybrid Saiyans. Um, you're really not going to be running him like at all, it, unless I guess you're a completely new player, but um, he is a cool card, like I like the art and everything, and I would still like, even though he's super old, even though he came out in 2016, uh, I would still like Bandai to bring him over to the global side just so we can have him, you know, in our boxes, right? So that's the first one. And the other one is actually a fusions unit, Secret Skill Tiencha. His leader skill is attack plus 5% per physical key sphere obtained, so he's a nuke lead. Um, as bad as it gets, I guess, because the ones that we use these days are like 30% or 33%. Um, but there you go, he's a nuke lead right there. Uh, super attack is Do Dodo Hameha. Dodo Hameha. Uh, causes extreme damage to enemy and it lowers attack. Passive is hidden talent, key plus 5 and attack plus 2500 when HP is 80% or below once only. So um, basically when you're starting the fight, when you're above 80% HP, I guess you just don't have any passive. He just literally has no passive. And his links are Fuse Fighter, Kamehameha, Dodan Ray, Z Fighters, and In Fighter. And his category is Fusion. And he's absolutely awful. He was acquired through uh, a free gift for those who commemorated the Dragon Ball Fusion's launch campaign. Now, of course, this has nothing to do with heroes, but um, we are right now on the topic of, you know, like Dokkan collaborations, and um, I kind of want this guy too. So, since we're on the topic of like free-to-play units that we don't have on Global that JP has, I had to bring this guy, this guy up as well, my man. Tiencha. So uh, Bandai Spies out there, if you're watching, give us Tiencha, give us Teen uh, Gotenks, and I would be really, really happy. Alright, moving on now. The next thing we're talking about is this STR Goku Black, who is actually a um, World Tournament reward on JP, or was, uh, for one of the older World Tournaments, and he has not yet been introduced on Global yet. I think it's going to happen in the next, like, Maybe, maybe the next world tournament, if not the next two or three world tournaments, but um, since he's still missing on global, I gotta talk about him in this video. And he's called the Warning from the Future Goku Black. 
leader skill is uh, STR type, no, extreme STR types, key plus 2, and HP and attack and defense plus 70%. His super attack is Black Power Ball, causes supreme damage to enemy and lowers attack and defense. This passive is Warped History. Uh, defense plus 15%, up to 60% with each attack received. So after 4 attacks, he maxes out at 60% defense on that part. And Future Saga category allies attack plus 20% and defense plus 20%. And Future and Time Travelers category allies attack plus 20% and defense plus 10%. So for uh, allies that are both Future Saga and, and Time Travelers, I believe they get both of those, so it would be 40% attack and 20% defense. And his links are Fear and Faith, Nightmare, Cold Judgment, Big Bad Bosses, Prepare for Battle, Dismal Future, and his categories are Realm of Gods, Patara, Future Saga, and Time Travelers. So there you go, that is the World Tournament Reward Goku Black. There's also another World Tournament Reward we're still missing on Global, and that would be the Tech Gotenks, Rushing Onslaught Gotenks. Leader skill is Super Tech Types, key plus 2, HP, Attack and Defense plus 70%. Super Attack is Dynamite Kick, raises Attack and Defense and causes Supreme Damage. And the passive is Battle Motivation, changes AGL key spheres to Tech key spheres. Youth category allies attack plus 20% and defense plus 10%. And Fusion category allies attack plus 20% and defense plus 10%. So very similar actually, as far as the support side goes, as the um, STR Goku Black that we just talked about, except for the fact that this guy is an orb changer and is not going to be as tanky as the Goku Black. Link skills are same warrior race, the same lineage, innocence, shocking speed, fuse fighter, over in a flash, and the categories are fusion, hybrid saiyans, modern Busaga, and also youth, and he was acquired on JP as part of the uh, 30th World Tournament, and once again, just like Goku Black, we should be getting this guy as well um, at some point within the next like two to three World Tournaments on Global. All right, moving on. Now we're going to talk about the units that are acquirable through the Copy Vegeta event, and of course, we're going to start with the AGL Copy Vegeta himself. His leader skill is Extreme Class, key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 40%, and his super attack is Clone Rush, causes supreme damage to the enemy and lowers attack and defense, and his passive is Copied Ability. Attack and defense plus 60% plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% up to 90% at the start of each turn, and all enemies attack and defense minus 30% when there is a Vegeta's family category enemy. So I don't love the second part of his passive because he can be very very strong if you're fighting a Vegeta's family category enemy, but that situation doesn't arise that often unless you're fighting like Vegeta or you're fighting Trunks or something like that. Um, so more often than not, all you're getting on his passive is attack and defense plus 60%, which is not great. It's it's, it's not very good. Um, but in the case that you are fighting a Vegeta's family uh, enemy, on the third turn that he appears, he'll have a total boost of attack and defense plus 150%, which is obviously awesome, but like I said, doesn't happen that often, so I think this unit is definitely super, super situational, and you won't be using him that much. His links are Metamorphosis, Infighter, tough, tough as Nails, Shocking Speed, More Than Meets the Eye, Prepare for Battle, and Shattering the Limit, and his categories are Transformation Boost and Artificial Life Forms. And we also have this STR Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, who can be used to raise the super attacks of pretty much all the other Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks in the game. Um, all two of them, <laughs> that is. And uh, his leader skill is Super Saiyan 3, category key plus 2, HP, attack, and defense plus 30%. The super attack is Die Die, Die Die Missile Barrage, causes supreme damage, and his passive is I'll defeat you in a single attack, key plus 5 and defense plus 50% for 5 turns from the start of the turn, and attack plus 90% when performing a super attack. So, um, at least for the first 5 turns, he can give himself basically a guaranteed super, and also attack plus 90% and defense plus 50%, which is not bad considering this is not a Dokkan Awakening. Um, so once he does get a Dokkan Awakening at some point in the future, I expect him to be pretty damn solid, way better uh, than the copy Vegeta, I hope. And his links are Super Saiyan, Fuse Fighter, Over in a Flash, Limit Breaking Form, The Innocence, and Budding Warrior. His categories are Fusions, 
or Fusion, Hybrid Saiyans, Super Saiyan 3, and Youth. And that is it for these two guys. We're moving on to another story now, and that would be the Universe 6 or Gathering, or what's it called? Gathering the Warriors? The Gathering of Universe 6's Warriors. And it comes with four different free to play cards. First one is Tech, no, not Tech, uh, Physical Hit, Quiet Bloodlust, Physical Hit. Theater skill is Physical Types, keep plus two. HP, attack, and defense plus 30%. Super attack is time skip. Causes supreme damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy. And his passive is Assassin's Territory. Changes in type key spheres to rainbow key spheres. Medium chance to evade enemy super attack, including super attacks. Sorry, medium chance to evade enemy's attack, including super attacks. And attack plus 66% when performing a super attack. Medium chance to stun the attack enemy. So you have a medium chance to stun on the super attack as well as the passive, which gives him overall a pretty decent chance to stun the enemy. And uh, his links are Infighter, Experienced Fighters, Cold Judgment, Tournament of Power, Warriors of Universe 6, and Shocking Speed. And its categories are Universe Survival Saga and Universe 6. So let's say you need a physical type stunner for something like Dokkan Battlefield. Then this guy can definitely get the job done. So there you go, and we're gonna move on now to next up, Salnol and Perina Resolution Bet on Survival. Their leader skill is Namekian's category, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 66%. Their super attack is Namek Combination, causes supreme damage, and raises allies' attacks by 20% for one turn. And their passive is absolutely insane. Check this out. So it's called Respect for Brotherhood, and they get attack and defense plus 15% per Universe 6 category ally on the team, which is not bad, but they also get key plus 1, an attack and defense plus 30% per Namekian's category ally on the team. But on top of that, there's this little bit of information. So, allies with both of the required categories, including themselves, will give them a total of key plus one, an attack and defense plus 45%. So, um, you get the combination of both of these buffs. And unfortunately, the only unit in this game right now with both categories is... Damn, Salonol and Perina, but think about it. If you run a full Namekians team of 7 Namekian units, including these guys who also give themselves this 15% attack and defense buff, then you're looking at a passive of key plus 7 and attack and defense plus 225%, which is just insane. That, that absolutely blows my mind that a free-to-play unit can get a buff that's that high and of course it is kind of situational you're not gonna be running a full Namekians team that often but still the fact they can get up to 225% attack and defense and plus 7 key is just crazy and keep in mind these guys don't have an awakening yet guys like I it scares me to think like how good these guys can be after they actually get an awakening at some point in the future which I know they will and, um, oh, also, even though they're the only Namekians and Universe 6 units right now, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't be surprised, I wouldn't put it past Bandai to release a separate Salonol and separate Purina card in the future. So if you add those guys in, then you're looking at 255% attack and defense. Oh, also, I didn't even mention that there's the new Piccolo now, right? With the 170% um, leader skill for Namekians. And there's also a new nail, so that category is actually looking pretty damn good, if I do say so myself. Alright, I'm getting too excited about these Namekians. Let's move on to uh, STR Champa unrestric Unrestricted Visit. His leader skill is Universe 6 category, key plus 2, HP, attack, and defense plus 40%. Super attack is God of Destruction's Punishment, causes supreme damage to enemy, and lowers defense. And his passive is God of Destruction's Advantage, medium chance. Of attack plus 200% which I believe is a 25% so medium is 25% chance so every once in a while like every fourth turn this guy's gonna do like some pretty nice damage for you but most of the time he's gonna do absolutely nothing his links are godly power connoisseur innocence more than meets the eye over 9,000 and shocking speed and his categories are Realm of Gods, Dragon Ball Seekers, Universe 6, and Siblings Bond. So nothing too special about this Champa. Um, quite similar actually to the Undoken version of the physical Champa. 
and uh, that guy was very, very bad, so uh, this guy is not great either. But, I mean, he's free to play, so that's okay. And last but not least, we have the Vados, who is actually the only unit out of the four that has a Dokkan Awakening at the moment. So this is her Dokkan Awakened form, and it's called Clear Path Vados. Leader skill is universe 6 category, key plus 2, HP, attack, and defense plus 66%. Super attack is Requiem of Destruction, causes supreme damage to enemy and lowers attack. And her passive is the Vice of an Angel, high chance to evade enemy's attack, including super attacks. And universe 6 category, allies, key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30%. So he's a good dodger, and that is a 50% chance to evade. And she's also a good support for Universe 6. So overall, very solid support unit. Um, links are Innocence, Brainiacs, uh, Rival Duo, Cold Judgment, Shocking Speed, Godly Power, Shattering the Limit, and her categories are Realm of Gods, Universe 6, and Sibling, Siblings Bond. And there you go, that is the Vados, and that is all four units from the uh, Universe 6 event, which I hope to get sometime soon because JP has had it for a while. So there you go guys, and next up we have the uh, events and unit that I'm personally the most excited for as far as free to play units go. This is the uh, Namek uh, Quiver, the final battle versus Frieza event. And of course from that we get this guy right here, which I've talked about in extensive detail, but since we're going over all of them, uh, I'll go over this guy one more time. This is the uh, physical second form Frieza with an Extreme Z Awakening, which comes out at the same time as the story event. So you can basically farm him and Extreme Z Awaken him at the same time. And post Extreme Z Awakening, he is a transformation boost category uh, leader, giving them key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 77%, or physical types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 50%. And his super attack is Death Storm Extreme greatly raises attack for one turn and i believe that is 50 percent greatly raises is let's see 50 percent for one turn the sa multiplier and uh causes mass damage to all enemies so he is an attack all unit and his passive power level over 1 million gives him attack and defense plus 60 percent plus an additional key plus six and attack and defense plus 40 percent when facing two or more enemies plus an additional attack plus 60% when the target enemy is in defense down status, which kind of relates to his active skill. And by the way, he's a free to play unit with an active skill, which is amazing. It's called Pleasurable Frieza Time, my favorite name in this entire game. And it causes supreme damage to enemy and greatly lowers attack and defense, can be activated when facing three or more enemies starting from the third turn from the start of battle once only. So once you activate this active skill, then you'll get that additional attack plus 60% on the passive as well because the enemy will be in defense down status. But of course, you don't have to rely on the active skill to trigger it. You can just use another ally or another unit on your team that can also uh, put the enemy in defense down status. And you'll get that additional 60%. And his links our Brutal Beatdown, Strongest Clan in Space, Universe's Most Malevolent, Prodigies, Fear and Faith, uh, Big Bad Bosses, Shattering the Limit, and his categories are Transformation Boost, Planet Namek Saga, and Wicked Bloodline. And as far as any other details, I don't think um, there's much else I need to say. Okay, his additional attack plus 60%, oh yeah, okay, so additional attack plus 60% is calculated separately for a total boost of 156%. When facing only one enemy and attack plus 220 percent when facing two or more enemies when the target enemy is in defense down status so needless to say he can be an absolute monster under the right conditions and i want him so bad and like i said in a previous video this guy is my most wanted my most anticipated free-to-play unit that we don't yet have on global i can't freaking wait all right moving on now i can't spend too much time on this guy because I already talked about him in the past but uh, now we're going to talk about the unit you can acquire from this new androids event and we're talking about the yard rat Goku and this guy is super super dope mainly for his counter animation man um, you guys haven't seen it yet go check it out I, I, I just love it I love what they did with this counter animation his super attack animation is a little bit basic I think but that counter though is just so good it's perfect okay so this is Int 
Um, Yard Drag Goku, or rather, Eternal Fighting Spirit and New Power Super Saiyan Goku. Theater skill is int types key plus 2, HP, attack, and defense plus 50%. Super attack is instant transmission Kamehameha. Causes supreme damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy, and medium, I believe, is 25% to 30%, something like that. Uh, passive skill is Teachings from Planet Yardrat. Uh, attack plus 59%, high chance to evade the enemy's attack, including super attack, as the first attacker in a turn. And damage received from normal attacks minus 59%, and counters with enormous power as the second or third attacker in a turn. So if you want him to be a dodger um, and have a high chance to be evade, then put him in the first slot of uh, a rotation. And the high chance, I believe, is 50%. Yeah, 50% to evade and aims attacks. Um, and let's see. If you want him to be a tank and receive significantly reduced damage, 59% reduced damage from normal attacks, and also have the counters, then put him in the second or third slot. And uh, that's a crazy passive, to be honest, for a free to play unit. Just the fact that we have a free to play unit that can tank this well and also counter. Um, he's very, very good. Very, very good unit. Okay, his links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Kamehameha, Experienced Fighters, Super Saiyan, Shocking Speed, and Shattering the Limit. And his uh, categories are Pure Saiyans, Goku's Family, and Super Saiyan. And I think that's all there is to cover about this guy. I just love his design so much, man. It's so damn clean. Anyways, moving on. Next up is a unit that can be acquired from the new cell event on JP, and that would be this base form STR Vegeta, who honestly in his current form is super basic and uh, not very good, but you know what, he will get a Dokkan Awakening in the future, and I'm sure he'll be much better, but right now his leader skill is Vegeta's Family, Category Key plus 1, HP, Attack and Defense plus 30%, his super attack is Big Bang Attack, raises attack and causes extreme damage to the enemy, his passive is sticking to my word, attack and defense plus 60% at the start of the turn, which you know is okay, but he also has extreme damage, so uh, he's not gonna hit that hard. His link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, Royal Lineage, Prodigies, the Saiyan Lineage, uh, Saiyan Pride, and Prepare for Battle. And his categories, super weird here, is just Vegeta's family. And if you guys haven't noticed, there's something missing here for sure, and that is Pure Saiyans. Where the F is Pure Saiyans? This is base Vegeta we're talking about, right? Like, did someone at Bandai just straight up forget that Vegeta is a Pure Saiyan? Or is this a different Vegeta that we know? Is there something else going on here? Like, I don't understand. It makes no sense to me that there is no Pure Saiyans as his category, but what can you do? It is what it is, right? And um, until he gets a Dokkan Awakening, I'm sure nobody is going to be running him on Pure Saiyans anyways. So uh, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Um, and that's all there is to say about him. I mean, he is actually uh, free to rainbow. He gets his own special potential orbs from the uh, Cell event. And here are the total number of orbs you need to rainbow him, if you guys want to know that. And uh, as far as his Dokkan Awakening goes, it's a question mark because, once again, nobody knows exactly um, what's it, what it's going to be. It's not available yet on JP. Actually, you know what? Let me refresh this page just in case. Um, something changed. Okay, so nothing changed yet. <laughs> I was scared that like within the last couple hours um, since I did my research that like there's been an update but there hasn't been so yeah at the moment this Vegeta sucks but um, he should get better like a lot better once he gets that Dokkan Awakening at some point in the future. Alright so there's the Vegeta and we have three more units now to talk about and I know this video has been going very very long um, but I think this is important to let you guys know what's going on and if you guys stuck through and are still here right now then you're the real MVP, congratulations! And this is a unit that I believe needs no introduction. Every single global player should know about this guy and of course I'm talking about the STR base Gogeta who is available as part of the Dragon Ball Super Broly event but only on JP, not yet added to global and I don't understand what is taking so long because Bandai, we already have the event, all you have to do is add him to the 11th stage and we're good to go, it's super simple right? So Bandai spies out there if you're watching right now, please listen to me, give us base Gogeta on global 
and we'll be all very, very thankful, okay? But anyways, let's move on to the details now because I'm sure it's not gonna work. <laughs> um, so STR Base Gogeta actually has an Extreme Z Awakening. As you can see, it says Extreme Z Awakened and uh, it says Leader Skill Z, Super Attack Z, everything is Z. And his leader skill post Extreme Z Awakening is Fusion Category Key plus 3, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 77%, or STR Types Key plus 2, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 30%. His super attack is Kamehameha Extreme, raises attack and causes supreme damage to enemy. And his passive is Vigorous Voltage, attack and defense plus 77%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% when there is a Goku's Family Category ally on the team plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% when there is a Vegeta's family category ally on the team, and also attacks effective against all types when there is a movie boss's category enemy. So a lot of stuff to digest here, but basically if you have a movie heroes team or a super type team where you have um, a Goku's family and Vegeta's family, then this guy can get up to a 117% attack buff and defense buff which is not bad at all for a free-to-play unit. And also, if you're fighting a movie boss's category enemy, then he'll get attacks effective against all types, which is kind of the uh, trademark or hallmark of Gogeta cards in this game. So there you go, very, very good unit overall. His links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Over in a Flash, Shocking Speed, Fuse Fighter, Kamehameha, Shattering the Limit, and his uh, categories are Fusion and Movie Heroes. And uh, that is pretty much it. These are all the medals you need to uh, Extreme Z Awaken him. And that's it, guys. So, uh, yeah, Bandai, if you're listening right now, if you're watching right now, please, like, just, just add base Gogeta, man. It, it can't be that hard. We already have the event on Global. All right, moving on. The last two cards I'm going to talk about in this video, guys, are two LRs, two free-to-play LRs that we're missing on Global. And the first one is LR uh, Mecha Frieza and King Cold, Revenge of the Most Sinister Father and Son, and they are available as, or will be available as the next Battlefield LR on Global. And they cost a grand total of 300,000 Battlefield memory to buy one copy. So if you guys want, want these guys or want this unit, then uh, start saving up now because they're quite pricey. Um, leader skill is Wicked Bloodline category key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 100%. Uh, really good, um, of course, for a free-to-play unit, but they are an LR, they are a Battlefield LR, so I, I've come to expect a little bit more from these Battlefield LRs. Uh, their super attack is a full power death beam for the 12 key, and then power of the Wicked Bloodline for the 18 key. Um, the 12 key causes colossal damage and lowers attack, while the 18 key causes mega colossal damage and raises extreme class allies attack by 30% for two turns, which is really solid actually. So they kind of have like a support mechanic built in as well. Their passive is domination and control, attack and defense plus 66%, plus an additional attack plus 20% per wicked bloodline category uh, ally on the team up to 60%. So you can get up to a total of 126%. Um, attack and 66% defense and also key plus 9 when there is a super saiyan category enemy so uh, not a bad passive there at all 126% uh, attack with a um, with LR stats basically is uh, can, get, can give, you, give you some pretty crazy damage overall uh, and the link skills are tough as nails universe's most malevolent brutal beatdown thirst for conquest strongest clan in space fear and faith and legendary power and the categories are Joint Forces and Wicked Bloodline. And it says here, yeah, maximum boost from passive skill is key plus 9, attack plus 126%, and defense plus 66% when all conditions are met. So there you go. That is the next Battlefield LR that we can expect on Global. LR Mecha Frieza and King Cold. And uh, yeah, very good free-to-play LR for sure. And last but not least, guys, we have the next Prime Battle LR. LR first form cell life form of hatred and destruction. I don't really know what's going on with the art here It's not animated, but um, even not animated you guys can tell it looks really really good, man I think this guy actually probably has um, Probably has one of my top five favorite LR card arts in this game if not like my favorite. I'm still undecided, but um, it's really, really, really good. His leader skill is Artificial Life Forms category, key plus three, 
HP, Attack, and Defense plus 100%, and his super attacks are Bile Extract Absorption for the 12 key and Deadly Bullet for the 18 key. The 12 key causes colossal damage and recovers 15% HP, so he can actually be a very good healer. And the 18 key causes Mega Colossal Damage and lowers Attack and Defense. And the passive is Cellular Anger, Attack and Defense plus 20,000 at the start of the turn, and key plus 1 up to 6 with each super attack performed. And also, when key is 18 or more, attack plus 20,000 and performs a critical hit, guaranteed critical hit, if the target enemy is in attack down status. So, for the second part of this passive, I think it can be a little bit confusing for some people. Basically, if you have 18 key or more, he gets an additional 20,000 attack, but not necessarily a guaranteed critical. To get a guaranteed critical, you have to have both 18 key or more, and also the enemy has to be an attack down status, so you have to meet both of those conditions to get that guaranteed critical, but it's still pretty crazy that he can get a guaranteed critical if you meet those two conditions. And uh, yeah, that's all for the passive, pretty standard for a Prime Battle LR, the um, flat boost has kind of been the, uh, I guess, trend for Prime Battles, and I don't see them changing that anytime soon, but it's still okay because uh, with his stats and with the fact that the flat boosts are actually pretty high, uh, his damage output is still pretty damn good. Just look at like the uh, Int Vegeta, like even though he has a flat boost, he can easily get up to over like 2 million attack stat on a Vegeta's family team. So yeah, this guy's good. And his links are Flea. <laughs> I didn't even notice he had Flea. Cupa okay, so I made a video a long time ago uh, called The Worst Links in Dokkan. And number one was Flea. And you guys will see why when you read this. Q plus one when HP is 30% or below. <laughs> it's just so bad. I okay, anyways. Um, he has Flea, so that's a thing. Messenger from the Future, Big Bad Bosses, uh, Attack of the Clones, Shocking Speed, Shattering the Limit, and Legendary Power. And his categories are Androids, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, and Artificial Life Forms. So there you have it. That is the uh, Prime Battle Cell for you guys. And he should be the next Prime Battle LR on Global as well. And that should take us back now to the very beginning, starting with the beat and the arms and so on and so forth so that's gonna do it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it it was very very long i did not expect it like i thought it was gonna be long but i didn't expect it to be this long so uh once again thank you guys so much for those of you that watched it all the way through up to this point and uh, even if you didn't and you watched part of it that's still cool I, i'm still happy i still appreciate it even though you probably can't see this message because you closed the video already but either way guys um, I thought this video was pretty important, or at least um, hopefully it was useful to you because uh, it now allows you to have an idea of what we can expect as far as free-to-play units on global for the next like at least six months or something like that. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful, and as always, if you guys liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video, and if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And one last thing is that I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below, out of all of these units, like all 17 or 20 units, I don't even know how many it was, which one are you personally the most hyped for, the most excited to run, the most excited to use, and um, I would love to read your opinions. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching, have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.